Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to my brand new series in Football Manager 2015. And as you can see, it is with AC Milan, a team that I feel uh, was requested a lot and also to actually manage in Serie A. The last time I did a Serie A save on Football Manager, on YouTube especially, I think it was in FM13 and that actually was with AC Milan. I don't think I've managed another Italian team on YouTube and I thought it's time to go back to my favorite Italian team, uh, one of my favorite teams in the world to be honest. Obviously I love watching Premier League but AC Milan is a team that myself and a lot of people, yeah, close friends and that kind of stuff, they, uh, like, they're like Italian. There's a lot of Italians in Australia uh, for those of you that are not in Australia and you wonder. There's actually yeah, um, a lot of different nationalities in Australia. It's pretty cool meeting new people all the time, different people from yeah, different places but yeah, back on that point I might as well just show you me, I put my realistic nationalities. I'm Australian, of course. I was born in Melbourne and I'm still in Melbourne uh, for those that want to know that. But you should know as I support Melbourne Victory, that's the actual team I support because that's the actual team I can go and watch play. Uh, I know some people support Premier League teams, which I don't have a problem with, but I just yeah, never found myself being able to truly support a team in that way. I follow certain teams and like watching them, but it's not the same kind of thing to yeah go, yeah, go and support your team. But I'm also Maltese. Uh, my dad's side of the families is Maltese and Italian as well with the languages spoken uh, because I'm managing in Italy. But yes, I'm Australian and Maltese. Uh, that's my mix. I suppose I'm English as well, my mum's side of family. But yeah, that goes back a long way. You can keep going back. But more or less, I'm Australian and Maltese, <laughs> to put it easily. So uh, we shall go back and analyze this career and before I go into it um, how this is going to be and everything I just got to say I want to say thank you uh, to the comments in my bar city save a lot of you guys really enjoyed that and honestly I thought there'll be more dislikes and more negative comments on the video because it was ended like ending and all that kind of stuff uh, but like the the comments was I really appreciate that you guys are the best like subscribers in the past I felt I had some yeah negative feedback but I didn't really I didn't see that and I thought I would have I was actually scared to read the comments uh, waking up the next day but yeah I, I went in to read them um <laughs> I was like listening to music put my favorite music in my ears before I read them but then I just saw uh, that's kind of my method of reading comments sometimes but anyway yeah uh, I went into it and then I just saw a lot of support and a lot of people actually yeah excited maybe to see something different and like I said, a few people actually suggested to manage in Serie A and AC Milan. So thank you guys for that. And you may see on the thumbnail as well, uh, two of the biggest reasons, two of my favorite players, one of them as really a young prospect, Hachi Mastor. I think this guy in the future is going to be a killer player. Hopefully we can develop him that way in Football Manager. I hope he does have the potential. It does say his potential to be a star. So surely he does have the potential in him. Uh, we have to mold him into the kind of player uh, we want, of course. He's got the high attributes there, technique, flair determination determination you can always train to be high like with uh, tutors and all of that uh, players like experienced player can tutor a younger player but yeah the technique and flair he's going to be one of those players with high first touch high dribbling he's probably one of my favorite younger players in the game or well, in real life as well I really I want to see him become a world-class player he just he looks cool as well like with his haircut and that um, yeah he just he, he looks like a really really talented player uh, stuff I've seen on YouTube as well. Uh, for me, I like him a bit more than Odegaard. To some people, some people might say Odegaard's better, but I just like Mastor better for whatever reason. He just, yeah, more my style of player, uh, you could say. But definitely, as attacking midfielder, we want to mold him into that kind of player. Maybe out wide, he could, yeah, definitely play a part if we do utilize that, which I'll show you in a second. But also, the second half, <laughs> or the other player, is Stefan al -Sharari. You could probably see, yeah, they're similar kind of players, but obviously, yeah, al -Sharari is coming on a bit. He he, start, he was like him, really. He was a younger guy uh, with potential, and he developed into that. He really came along um, a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, that's when he really stepped up to become a key player. He showed he is uh, a first-team player at the highest level, scoring 16 goals. He can play on left wing or striker naturally, which is really, really important for us. We will both actually yeah showcase or utilize those two positions in our formation. Uh, he's just a fantastic player. I'm not going to analyze my whole team. I don't want this video to be long. Uh, uh, but yeah, I feel my time, it's time to come back to AC Milan after getting yeah fired with them in FM13. Um, or just looking at their team or remembering back their team, it wasn't the greatest. And we had 
yeah, high expectations, of course, and the same expectations are there. It may be even harder this time. And I think I may have actually done a stream late in FM14 or something like that, but it was, again, nothing too serious because my streams don't really go too well because it disconnects. Like, I tried to stream last night, actually, but it didn't quite work out, even with better internet now. That's something I want to just touch on for a little bit. I will be uploading 3D. Uh, 3D games for now, so I may skip the next couple games in Manchester United. I record the next couple in 2D, but I think I'll just yeah go straight off with the next episodes on 3D. We'll see, we'll see how it goes anyway. Uh, because yeah, I can upload in 3D now. My upload speed is well, not I can upload in 3D. That's not really the best way to say it. My upload speed is on average about yeah six times faster. Just judging off like for example, my FIFA videos used to take about 80 minutes to upload, and now they take like 20 minutes or something like that. So yeah, 15, 20 minutes on average, about uh, six times faster. And those, yeah, my last Manchester United episode, it was like 40 minutes. I did play the games in two days, but it took like five minutes to upload. Crazy. So that will allow me to upload in 3D, um, 3D games, even if I do play two games in an episode. Leave your comments if that's a style you want to see this series as well. Would you want to see me yeah, show every game? Because I am at the top, it's not going to be... Oh, but again, yeah, you don't really know if I am going to move to teams in the future. But yeah, leave your suggestions how you like to see it. Part of me, sometimes I say to, say to myself, you know, like, I want to go back to why I started YouTube and how I started YouTube with my Football Manager videos. And I wasn't playing every single game. But at the same time, I have to get a good mix of it where I do still enjoy it. But you guys, uh, you get what you subscribe for at the same time as well. But I always say to myself, I started YouTube with no subscribers and people subscribe for what I did. So yeah, leave your feedback anyway. That's what I love seeing from you guys. But what I did want to say about AC Milan, what was probably a bit different to last time I managed them in FM13, uh, if you take away the loan players, the squad looks pretty weak. But that's the thing. They have some quality players on loan. Mattia Destro, I've actually never managed him in Football Manager, but I think he's a class player a class striker, we'll have an option to sign him, won't we? Yeah, for 11.12 million, but we don't have that money right now, so that might be a bit difficult. But for the first season, then we can maybe sign our own striker next season. Uh, Giampaolo Pazzini, he's going to be a good player for us this season, I hope, anyway. He, one of the strikers, ideally, I would want Destro to be number one, then Pazzini will come in for rotations, but you know Pazzini's game. He's a very good striker. He's got good heading. He's very good in the air, despite being only 180 centimetres. He's not like amazingly tall or anything you can see from that. Or 14 strikes, not too bad, but even jumping reach. Uh, he just, when he can get that header on, uh, he's a very clinical finisher. Anticipation's good off the ball. He's very brave as well, so he'll go in for those headers. A striker I like, so yeah, he's another one of those. But what I was going to say about the loans, you've got Destro, um, you've got Alessio Kirchi, is that how you say it? I'm not 100% sure. I'll probably research it um, after this <laughs> to how I say his name probably. But yeah, Alessio, very experienced man, 26 uh, years of age. Obviously, he played heaps with Roma. So he's Italian, no problem with playing in Italy. Uh, he's a class player to get on loan, don't you think? So that's an amazing signing. We're going to utilize him as a lot as an inside forward with our wingers. Oh, definitely a player needed. If we didn't have him on loan, it will be a much harder case or situation to get our achieve or yeah get our targets achieve our targets this season uh mario van ginkel a player i like from chelsea not sure if he's actually absolutely world class right now but do you have an option to sign him no nah, there's no option to sign him how about yeah i don't think there is uh for kirchi as well where are we uh, contracts yeah there's no option but there is for destro but we struggle to have that amount of money and then we've got pablo amero from udinese a nice player again i want to yeah reflect that in my tactics uh, using attacking wing backs or complete wing backs because uh, I like the way they get forward. Also, yeah, look at that two left backs on loan. Uh, Luca Antonelli, who's probably not the best in the world, uh, but he'll be good to be backup, I believe. Yeah, if we go again, Amiro should be the best rated. Well, he's on, yeah, he's on par with Antonelli, but I reckon Amiro with his yeah, quickness getting forward off the ball as well, he'll be really good and he's got a great smile on him as well. But that doesn't really affect anything. Then there's Salvatore Bacchetti. Uh, he's from Spartak Moscow on loan. Uh, obviously Italian. And that's what I want to do this. Uh, sometimes I may not 
reflect that way with my signings or whatever, if I, Manchester United or whatever, but in Italy here with AC Milan, I want to have a core of Italian players. Of course, there's going to be some quality players that will be available to sign out that are not Italian, but I want, yeah, the core of the team to be Italian, and we'll see how that goes, and I'll go into the league rules after this, but yeah, uh, Salvatore Bacchetti, uh, can we sign him? Is there a, ooh, future fee, 3.6 million. We have the money there, so, but again, he's not a signing I'd go for Really, I'll probably want to go for a guy with a similar quality, but that can get better. But that's a really cheap fee. It's cheaper than his value, 27 experienced. So maybe in the first half of the season, like I've got to make sure I don't use all my money or something. But if he shows he's a good defender, it's a cheap enough fee to sign an experienced player. It's all about yeah, the performance. You've got to take ages out of it sometime, and you've got to focus on yeah, who's going to yeah, help you achieve what you are. That's what I mean about yeah, getting fired or something like that. It's all good and well signing players that's going to be amazing in three or four seasons, but sometimes you have to manage <laughs> yeah, how you like to get your expectations right now to make sure you don't get fired. It's Like I said, it's all uh, well and good playing for the future or yeah, managing for the future, but if you're not going to be the manager there in the future, it's all pointless. Like I said, you've got to do what's best for the team. But unfortunately, our captain, which is going to affect us, but hopefully it doesn't. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't affect us as, as much as I think it might. Uh, Montalivo, our captain, is going to miss the first half of the season. So that's a big thing uh, for us. We're going to have to look for some replacements, maybe a free transfer. I'm not really sure. Put the money in the wage budget. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys think, but our balance is really low. Like I said, uh, there's not many room or not much room to make a huge signing. We've got Guang Zhao um, as a affiliate. Uh, where are we? It says, yeah, it's one of those. Uh, uh, we are the senior affiliate. They're the affiliate club. Uh, the presence of AC Milan within China will be a major benefit. And China's not the main one. I think it's Japan and USA. So uh, over the next couple seasons, if you get Japan and USA, uh, teams from there we can yeah generate a lot of merchandising sales um, throughout those countries. That's what I usually like to do. And that's what I mean. Improving AC Milan, get back yeah, future successes, get back to that. It's a lot of steps. It's not just about signing young players for the future or something. Um, there's a lot of foundations you have to set within the team. And I'll go to tactics now. I've talked about the team a bit, but yeah, this is the kind of quick formation kind of stock standard. And yeah, football managers not like this anymore. You can't just use a good tactic. If you were to do it this season, you probably, or in Football Manager 15, uh, what you do, you probably want to get a striker formation. You might go out there on the internet or whatever people do these days <laughs> to download good tactics. Three striker formation is, yeah, it's it's good. you got to be honest, it's good. I've used that with Manchester United, three strikers, but it wouldn't suit me with AC Milan. I wanted to build a tactic personally uh, that's going to be good for us. And AC Milan, a 4-2-3-1 is pretty obvious. That suits the formations. Uh, we've got a good amount of defenders, especially centre-backs. We've got quite a bit, so definitely. We've got some experienced guys that I don't think is worth selling. I want to yeah, touch on that. Zicardo, he's a guy you probably say sell, but you get maybe 100k for him. What's the point? You might as well keep his experience. Of course, I'm not going to start him heaps. He's just going to be there for backup. Like, you sell him for about 100k. What's yeah? What's the point of that? Same with Benera. You might get the same 100k because he's a bit older. You have to sell him a bit under his value. You might as well keep him for his experience and versatility at the back and play a lot of defensive positions. Same with Zicardo. So, yeah, I don't really see the point in selling, especially with Mexis as well, who I think he's one of... Uh, I'll say he's not one of the better anymore, but uh, I've always liked him as a defender. He's always been a very good centre-back. But again, there's no point selling him. Get, what, maybe 300k you think he's going to be worth more than that for you maybe for at least the first season we're going to see if we're going to renew his contract or not because he is the one thing you look at yeah you have to look at that 100k so yeah that's a big one but the other two guys are checked out their wages are not that dramatic so depending how he performs is depending if we offer him a new contract next season so uh yeah four at the back pretty simple but yeah we're playing complete wing backs but not on attack on support you see the difference on attack it says with an attack duty the complete wing back will be a little more adventurous in his attacking exploits as he seeks to primarily impact the game in the opposition's half of the pitch. But you go to support, it says with a support duty, the complete wingback will look to combine his attacking instincts with some defensive responsibilities in an effort to provide balance to the team. So with Manchester United, I use attack because obviously we have the quality there, but AC Milan, there's still some quality teams in the league. And we're not even in Europe, not even in Europa League because they finished eighth last season. So I, po I guess that's the only positive. I can focus on the league completely 
and we're not going to have heaps of games because yeah nothing in europe uh we can make sure we do finish top three and it is in that in uh, italy in the Serie A, yeah not top four uh i think it's like from fourth to six that qualify for europa league and it's top three top two get the automatic qualification into the champions league and the third one is where you play that yeah qualifying game early in the next season so even though it's normally against an easy beat team uh, you still have to play that. So I'm probably even targeting top two. Um, I try, oh yeah, I'll definitely try and win the league in the first season. That might be a uh, something that's beneficial to us compared to a Juve or something. We still got a big squad. Like I said, with all these guys in on loan, uh, you got Van Ginkle, Antonelli, Destro. There's a couple guys that add depth to the team, like Van Ginkle, Antonelli, Bacchetti. But guys like Destro, Kirchi and Amero, they're going to be, they're actually key players. And to get those key players on loan, uh, best starting 11, I reckon it could be a team that could challenge for a title. And with Juve, uh, with some world-class players, minimal world-class players in the team, though, like Al Sharawi, uh, Honda, uh, I don't think he's world-class, but I mean, yeah, like key players. They're, they're good team. They're good players, uh, like for a top team in the Serie A. So, and especially our defense as well. Adil Rami is a really experienced defender. Uh, he's And he's really, really good. He's 28. That's He's got that experience at 28, so he's got a lot of years in him. We could play Alex as well. So in this formation, this one, I want to see, of course, other comments, who to sign. Well, this is the thing. We don't need signings unless we sell a lot of players. The only player of transfer list is Albertazzi because he's just not good enough. He's got a bit of potential at 23, but at, yeah, at 23, he's not going to increase so much more. I don't think he'll be good enough. Uh, but then we've got Suso, amazing signing. I feel, again, along with the loan signing, the January signing of him, uh, you go to the history, uh, you see he signed for Liverpool um, a while back, a few years ago. He developed, they, they made some profit, 58, yeah, 58K. Uh, Cadiz, they had a good play, but I guess Liverpool really developed him. I don't think he would have become as good as he is. And I actually managed a stream I do remember this year was with Real Sociedad. He got heaps, He actually, I think he got a few goals for me and assists he got quite a bit i think he got the most assist in the league or something crazy like that so suso we've got to have him permanently and a guy he can improve he's only 20 uh, like i still think what he's done in real life so far he's a decent player but in the game now he's only 20 he can improve so much more he's going to be class for us so he could play out wide as inside forward or yeah through the middle as a attacking midfield or advanced playmaker the specific role we're playing uh, so that's, yeah, the back four I talked about, the roles, goalkeeper, just yeah, general goalkeeper on defend, not a sweeper keeper. Uh, we're playing with a ball-winning midfielder. I'm not sure why. I just did, yeah, assistant pick before. That's why Polly went there. Who I'm, I'm almost thinking about selling him. Like, I was going through my team. Who can I sell to make money, you know, uh, to make some signings? But, yeah, I, went, I saw his report. Then I saw, uh, where is it? Yeah, he could improve a slight amount in the future. So he could step up from being a good player to being a leading player. Is that good enough though? Like he's a guy, when I managed AC Milan in the past, it was a couple of years ago. So you got to keep that into account or take that into account. Uh, he could get a bit better, but he's a guy I feel that didn't step up. But again, he's a guy you're probably not going to get much money for him. Like a huge, like a difference maker amount to get someone amazing in. So uh, then we just got, yeah, usually in that position we'll play De Jong, but in the assistant pick, he picked him to play that center mid on support, which is interesting. And then the three attacking uh, positions, attacking midfield position, we've got advanced playmaker uh, through the middle, uh, the AMC, and then the wingers are inside forward. So they're going to be cutting in. And I actually want them to score a lot of goals, to be honest. And the fullbacks will cut in, or not cut in, sorry, they, they'll get forward. And I've got them like to run, ride, run, run wide <laughs> with the ball. Uh, yeah, to utilize all that space out wide uh, with those inside forwards cutting in. And that's real dangerous. Both, yeah, Al Sharari and Kirchi are going to be, they're really good players. Those are guys that can score. Then you partner that with Honda through the middle. Menes is not a bad player if he comes on with some spark. He's got good dribbling and good pace. And Destro, yeah, I reckon if he gets good, he's a guy, if he gets service, he'll find the back of the net. And if we have money in the future, we might sign him. But right now, future fee, 11 point. 2 million. I don't think we can get that unless, yeah, somehow we get more money from somewhere uh, where the board makes funds available. But I think he could be a real good striker for us. He's a guy that's a poaching type. We're playing with advanced forward as well. Just take note of the roles. Uh, this is just what I originally set up for it as well. So I may make changes as we go on, which I may need to do. It probably won't be absolutely amazing 
from the start. So again, I think that's pretty much it to cover. I know, always, when I do my yeah first episode, I always miss one thing that, oh yeah, I should have shown that. But then I just think, yeah, I can show that in the next episode. I suppose something key is we have three keepers, uh, but that's not too bad uh, for a team like AC Milan. Uh, who struggled last season, and if we struggle with, our, like, obviously, Diego Lopez is our best-rated keeper, apparently, he's got good aerial ability, reflexes, but if he doesn't perform, we've got, like, the experience of Abiati to come in, but for whatever reason, if he does badly, uh, like, maybe too old or something, then we've got Mikale Agazi, who, he's not amazing, but then we have three different options, I think that can be all right, I've never wanted to have that before, I'd usually sell the other guy, but the reason, because of that, like, he just signed, so it's going to be hard to sell him. Like guys that are just signed is really hard to sell in football manager and pretty unrealistic as well, like for a player that just joined. So usually I'd go to him as the key guy to sell. I look at um, Abiati. There's no point selling him again that case because he's too old and his value is really, really low because of that. Because of his age, there's no point selling him. And you look at Lopez and, and Agazi. Agazi just signed, so we can't sell him or at least will be very, very tough to. And then Diego Lopez is the key goalkeeper, the best goalkeeper in the team. But you could look, he's not absolutely world-class. You sell him, maybe get $9 million for him or something. But he's old as well. But will that experience as a keeper uh, show as something good? I don't really know. But again, just to show you something key uh, with Serie A, uh, where are we? Where's the rules? Here we go. And you go to the... Te uh, where is it transfer rules yeah teams are restricted to signing two non-eu players so basically that's majority south american players like brazil argentina those kind of stuff uh, those kind of teams uruguay uh, those kind of teams yeah teams you're, you're restricted to signing two of those so there's no actually maximum i think it's in maybe something like the la liga uh you can only have a certain amount i think like it's three or something i think three is it i don't or five one of those, I don't know, um, yeah, you can only have three of those actually registered in the team, but if, say, if you sign two every season for the, like, four seasons, you have eight of those, eight first teamers you need to register because of that, uh, that won't matter, because there's no, yeah, registration details because of that, I don't think, anyway, league sorting rules as well, if teams are on the same points, uh, it's not goal difference that settles it, uh, first, it's the results between the teams, which I actually like that rule in Serie A, so that's really good, so I think that's it to cover. But here, yeah, it doesn't say uh, what it is to qualify for Europe, but I know that personally because of my Serie A save in career mode in FIFA. I had to be yeah aware of that, obviously, so I researched it, and I've managed in Serie A before, as I mentioned. Yeah, it's the top three. Top three qualify for Champions League. The third position is where you still have to play that qualifying game. And I think it's, is it fourth and fifth that qualify for Europa League, or is it fourth to six? I'm not really concerned about that because I want to go for the top three Champions League finish as that's what the board wants. And again, we're improving training facilities, youth facilities, and also the youth youth recruitment. I improve that as well. Um, but I was going to check out, yeah, where are we? The Serie A. Yeah, to qualify, that's the minimum expectation. To qualify for Champions League, that's a no-brainer uh, to get AC Milan back in Champions League. That's kind of my immediate goal. And they say the Italian Cup is not that important. So I want to do well in the Cup, though, at the same time. They may be happy because of that. Or won't they care? Sure, they'll care if I win it, uh, without a doubt. Also, yeah, uh, this guy we are bringing in. We released our other head of youth development. Can't remember his name. We go to the inbox to find out. Um, yeah, Gully. Uh, he's decent. He's got decent attributes. But I feel... Uh, this guy, Fermo Favini, very experienced, 78 years of age, but he knocks him out of the ballpark, ballpark without a doubt. 20 working with youngsters, 18 man management, 17 mental. So the coaching side of things, like in training, he's going to be amazing for the players, especially with his experience, 78. But then, yeah, this is, like I said, this is where he knocks him out of the ballpark, his mentals. Derm determination is 20 Judging playability, 18, which for a youth coach, it doesn't matter, but you still want it to be decent enough. But actually, it does matter a little bit when bringing in the players, like in the youth intake. Of course, it's have it's good to have 20 out of 20 for judging player potential, to get high potential, but also the, judge, the judging player ability that goes into, or what that helps is the actual current ability of the players. So to make sure those youth players you do bring in, they're as good as they can. B, yeah, as good as they can be right away. So they're not really low current ability. So that's what that does. Uh, so high judging potential as well. That's 
probably the main thing you look for. But then level of discipline, motivating, tactical knowledge, they're all going to, some you may not think are relevant, tactical knowledge, probably not, but it just makes him a better uh, yeah, head of youth development coach um, as a whole. So uh, I feel like I explained as much as I can here. I think I covered everything. So yeah, we have about 5 million. Uh, we might have to look at loans uh, to bring in. But as I said, um, we have a lot of options in the team already. I don't want to have too many players in my squad. That might not be good. I'll just leave position there. I don't know why I clicked on it. Uh, we'll go to transfer status. And we'll not... Well, you can look at transfer listed players. Someone like Antonio Valencia from Manchester United. But that's the thing. He's not really... He. Oh, it says he could play inside forward, but I think he's more of a winger. Yeah, but good physically. Yeah, I don't know. He's a good player from a good team, but he's not that good, I don't... I don't think. Uh, but these are the players that are available for transfers. You can maybe... Nabil Daira, who's a... Yeah, none of them. I'm going to have to, yeah, look more into him. Maybe look into scout reports of transfer listed. There's Cavanda. Again, I don't feel we need a right back. Like, we've got heaps of players, <laughs> yeah, around the park. I've like, got Abate and Dechilio. They should be amazing. Dechilio is a good fullback, but I feel Abate is the better wing back playing in that position as a complete wing back. So, yeah, those two... Obviously, yeah, the Dechilio... I'm training him in that role, so hopefully he can prove over time. He'll definitely be the man, uh, the main guy in the future. Simone Pepe from Juve, uh, very good mentals, but he's injury prone. Natural fitness is one, so yeah, pointless having a guy like that. He's not going to play enough. But yeah, transfer list. There's no one about Bruno Perenia. Is he any good? Eh, not really. Yeah, you just go back to value. If yeah, anyone catches your eye there, Yannick Sagbo. Maybe if you want to have another backup for a striker, but get this and yeah, not really good. How about Detino uh, from Shakhtar? Some decent attributes, but you can see why they're transfer listed. Francis Coquelin, yeah, he's okay, but some very low attributes. Versatile, though, can play a lot of positions. But those are really the players that spring to mind right here. There's some younger guys, maybe, uh, who's, yeah, this 22-year-old. Uh, Eduardo Sasha, again, yeah, they're not going to be high quality. But then we'll check out some loan listed players. Uh, Jordan Ive from Liverpool. I'm not sure if he'll how he'll go. Uh, just, uh, yeah, don't think he's high value. I'm not sure how he'll go right away. Uh, Alan Patrick looks all right. Well, not really. <laughs> so, yeah, those are just some options there at a quick glance. So, there we go, AC Milan. Uh, like I said, I think I covered as much as I could there. This is going to be a huge series for me. Hopefully, I won't suffer the same fate as I did in FM13 where I got sacked from AC Milan. But I just feel this is my time. I feel... Yeah, this is the right time for me to be successful with AC Milan. Like I said, I've really, uh, I know a lot of people that support uh, AC Milan strongly. Some people, I'll go as far as saying it, they're pretty close to me that I know. And yeah, I kind of want to <laughs> do this for them, but also for myself as a manager uh, to be really good. I'm really, I have to say, this is probably, I'm, I'm as motivated to do well as ever with AC Milan. For, like I said, for a lot of reasons. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that I want to, yeah, make this successful and maybe to be even a legend of this club. That's the, that's the main goal for me. That's what I want to achieve and, yeah, get some European success and domestic success as well. But, yeah, I want to be really a success in Europe, most definitely, with AC Milan, yeah, be a force in Europe. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, drop a like, maybe. I know it may be out of reach, but a thousand likes on this first episode, that will be absolutely amazing. I know that's probably a lot to ask for, uh, but I feel I have it in, you guys have it in you. If you want to see the next episode uh, where I do the transfers, conduct the transfers, uh, the preseason, everything like that. And yeah, we'll get into the first game of the season, hopefully start off well. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this. I'll appreciate that thumbs up on the video. Even subscribe if this is the first video you've seen from me. Uh, for a lot of Football Manager content daily on this channel. And I'll see you guys in the very next video.